Good day everyone. We are the first group, Edzer Navarro, Patricia Palad, and Francesca Sahagun. For this topic, we will talk about the introduction to ethics according to the book entitled Practical Ethics, written by Peter Singer. But first, let us know who Peter Singer is. Peter Singer is an Australian-born Jewish philosopher born on July 6, 1946. He is a professor of philosophy at the European Graduate School. He is also a chair of ethics at Princeton University and has also been the chair of philosophy twice at Monash University in Australia, where he also founded the Center for Human Bioethics. He is known as a rationalist philosopher in the Anglo-American tradition of utilitarianism. He teaches practical ethics, which he defines as the application of morality to practical problems based on philosophical thinking rather than religious beliefs. As I have said earlier, we will discuss ethics based on his book, Practical Ethics, specifically the first chapter entitled About Ethics. Here, he explains the assumptions about ethics on which his book is based. He also noted that the terms ethics and morality are used interchangeably for practical issues. Peter Singer first explained what ethics is not, and there are five assumptions about it. The first one is ethics is not primarily about sex. In the past, people perceived sex as the main focus of morality. When they read newspapers with headlines like religious leader attacks, declining moral standards, they automatically think that it must be about promiscuity, homosexuality, or pornography. Because this narrow view of morality, it became common to consider that it is a set of prohibitions particularly concerned with sex. Fortunately, at the present, people no longer think of morality that way. The view of morality has widened and covers even global issues. Religious leaders even talk about other relevant issues today like global poverty and climate change. The second assumption is that ethics is not good in theory but not in practice. The truth is that an ethical judgment that is no good in practice must suffer from a theoretical defect as well. For the whole point of ethical judgments is to guide practice. People sometimes believe that ethics is not applicable in real life because they think that ethics is a system of short and simple rules like do not lie, do not steal, or do not kill. But the failure of an ethic of simple rules must not be taken as a failure of ethics as a whole. For example, as I have mentioned earlier, the failure of morality that is focused on restricting our sexual behavior. Peter Singer argued that those who think that ethics is a system of rules, also called the ontologist, should find more complicated and specific rules that do not conflict with each other and rank the rules in some hierarchical structure to resolve conflicts between them. Conversely, in the consequentialist view, simple rules are difficult to apply. Consequentialists start with goals rather than morals and assess actions by the extent to which they further these goals. The best known consequentialist theory is utilitarianism. The classical utilitarian regards an action as right if it produces more happiness for all affected by it than any alternative action and wrong if it does not. There are two qualifications to that statement. The first is that happiness should be more than the suffering or misery caused by the action. The second is if two different actions tie for producing the greatest amount of happiness, then either of them is right. A utilitarian will judge lying as bad in some circumstances and good in others, depending on its consequences. The third assumption is that ethics is not based on religion. Singer treats ethics as entirely independent of religion. Some believers of God believe that good is what God approves of. But Plato argued that if the gods approve of some actions, then it must be because those actions are good, and it cannot be the gods' approval that makes them good. Moreover, the difference between the two is that religion taught that those who are virtuous will be rewarded by an eternity of bliss, while the rest rose in hell, while according to Immanuel Kant, we must obey the moral law for its own sake and not for any self-interested motives. Furthermore, it is not enough to say that our everyday observation of our fellows clearly shows that ethical behavior does not require belief in heaven and hell, and conversely, that belief in heaven and hell 
does not always lead to ethical behavior. But if morality was not given by a divine creator, then from where did it come? Singer argued that we developed a moral faculty that generates intuitions about right or wrong during evolution. He added that morality has developed under the influence of our acquisition of language. What are evolved intuitions that do not necessarily give us the right answers to moral questions? Also, what was good for our ancestors may not be good for human beings as a whole today. Like the be fruitful and multiply. Given the number of population on the planet, this does not apply to the present. Singer added that our moral intuitions are not always good, stating John Stuart Mill's argument. In his argument, he says that the second meaning of nature is the world, and human beings do unnatural things that disrupt the naturalness of the world because of necessity like treating diseases. Understanding the origins of morality therefore frees us from God and nature. And we need to determine which set of moral intuitions we have inherited from our ancestors we should change. So if you can recall, last meeting, all of us were asked if we think that ethics is relative to the society we live in, and many said yes. However, Singer claims that ethics is not relative to the society we live in. To be precise, it's true in one sense and false in another. Why? So if we look at consequentialism, the actions may be right or wrong depending on their consequences. For instance, pumasok ako sa bahay ng neighbor ko nang walang permiso and nakita ko siya na unconscious. So I was able to call the ambulance and help my neighbor. Maganda yung consequences. Pero paano kung then pumasok pa rin ako nang di nagpapaalam and perfectly okay siya? Maganda pa rin ba consequences? If we were to look at it objectively, when applied to all instances, hindi siya okay, right? So this superficial form of relativism does not give us any reason to reject the universalizability of other more general principles like do what increases happiness and reduces suffering. To further prove that ethics is not relative to the society we live in, Singer also brought up how Marxists adopt a more fundamental form of relativism but later abandoned it in favor of a more limited descriptive claim. So in the 19th century, the new form of relativism led some people to believe that no moral judgment can do more than reflect the customs of the society in which it is made. This led to some problems for the Marxists. If the morality of a society is relative to its dom dominant economic class, why side with the proletariat? So later on, Marxists came to the conclusion that the morality of a society divided into classes will always reflect the interests of the ruling class. By abandoning the relativism that was previously mentioned, Ordinary ethical relativism has been defeated by the same problem. Kasi if one really thinks about it, if we have to make a difficult ethical decision, sa atin at sa ating mga sarili lang nakasalalay ang decision. Even if we are being told about what our society thinks we ought to do, it does not solve our predicament. <laughs> the view that the ethics is and can only be relative to a particular society has most implausible conse consequences as this kind of relativism gives us no basis for choosing between conflicting views. For instance, if sinabi mo na okay manguha ng pag-aari ng iba kasi sabi ng society mo, okay lang. Then if sinabi ko na hindi okay kasi sabi ng society ko, hindi. Then ano pang pag-uusapan natin? We're probably both saying the truth. Also, the relativist cannot satisfactorily account for the nonconformist. If sinabi ng isang member ng society mo yung kabaligtara ng paniniwala nyo na hindi okay manguha ng pag-aari ng iba, sasabihin nyo na factually wrong lang siya. Pero if later on, na-convince niyo yung karamihan sa society nyo na mali nga manguha, doon lang siya magiging tama. So if we were just discussing relativism, now we will discuss subjectivism. According to Singer, ethics is not merely a matter of subjective taste or opinion. Rather than depending our judgments on the approval or disapproval of our society, nakadepende siya sa ating mga sarili. If I say that procrastinating is wrong, and if you say that there's nothing wrong with it, then again, what will we argue about? We're both probably stating the truth. 
So here are three positions falling under the broad label of subjectivism that do not deny reason and argument a role in ethics, though disagree as to the significance of this role. The first is emotivism. This theory holds that we try to express our own attitudes rather than describing them in order to bring others to a similar attitude. The second is universal prescrip prescriptivism. This position urges that ethical judgments are more closely related to commands than to statements of fact. They are prescriptions. Lastly, error theory holds that the way we think and talk about ethics imply the existence of objective moral standards. Pero it has some kind of error. Baka dahil lang ito sa matagal na paniniwala na ethics is a God-given system or dahil lang tendency natin i-objectify yung wants and preferences natin. So now that we have discussed what ethics is not, we will now discuss what ethics is. So to know what ethics is, we need to dis distinguish the ethical from the non-ethical. There are two distinctions that are run together in this process. First, the distinction between living according to two different ethical standards, right and mistaken. Second, living according to some ethical standards and no ethical standards at all. So for example, if I constantly lie and cheat, pero naniniwala ako sa sarili ko na hindi naman mali ginagawa ko, then I may be living according to ethical standards. Hindi conventional yung ethical standards ko, pero I may be living to some other ethical standards. So, the notion of living according to ethical standards is tied up with the notion of defending the way one is living, of justifying it. So, on one hand, if ang mga tao gumawa pa ng kahit anong kasamaan, basta handa sila i-justify yung ginawa nila, they're still living according to ethical standards. On the other hand, if di nila kaya i-justify kahit ba sumusunod sila sa conventional principles, pwede pa rin natin sabihin na they're not living according to ethical standards. Also, it is worth noting that the justification must be of a certain kind. If dahil sa self-interest, hindi ito enough. To further identify the ethical, here are some characterizations. First, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them to you. Meaning, we should give the same way to the interests of others as you would give to your own interests. As for the universal natural law, sinasabi ni Kant na we should act on that maxim through which you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. Next, in moral judgments, Hare saw universal is ability as their logical feature. As for the impartial spectator, Hutchison, Hume, and Adam Smith appealed to an imaginary impartial spectator as the test of a moral judgment. Next, utilitarians believe that in deciding moral issues, each counts for one and none for more than one is unquestionable. Lastly, the veil of ignorance which prevents those choosing from knowing whether they will be the ones who gain or lose by the principles they select. So, if you realize, all these characterizations agree that the justification of an ethical principle cannot be in terms of any partial or sectional group. This is because ethics takes a universal point of view. However, this does not mean that a particular ethical judgment must be universally applicable. What it means is that, in making ethical judgments, we go beyond our likes and dislikes. Since for Singer, ethics requires a universal perspective, at noon pa man, para sa mga philosophers at moralists, acceptable lang daw ang ethics kung universal to. Bakit kaya? Ano nga bang meron sa pagiging universal ng ethics? Maraming nag-attempt pero nag-fail sa pagbuo ng ethical theory mula sa universal aspect ng ethics. Sabi ni Singer, yung ethical theory na to dapat daw broad and neutral enough to give us guidance about what's right and what's wrong. Kaya dinedefine ni Singer ang universalizability ng ethics, o yun ng universal ethics, na parang ang starting point nito ay isang broad na utilitarian perspective. At sabi pa ni Singer, if we're going to move beyond utilitarianism, which is all about achieving happiness and preventing pain, 
para pumunta sa mismong universal ethics, our own wants, needs, and desires cannot count more than the wants, needs, and desires of others. Nandun dapat yung acceptance na sa pagiging universal ng ethics, dapat parang universal din yung magiging decisions natin. Yung tinatawag na pre-ethical stage, doon, sariling preferences lang natin iniisip natin in making decisions. But, pag nasa mismong ethical stage na tayo, kung saan we're thinking ethically, dapat ang concern na natin ay ang preferences, ito yung tinito kayo na wants, needs, desires ni Singer, ng ibang tao. In short, lagi mo dapat iisipin yung mga taong maaapektuhan ng decisions mo. That's why, universal ethics points towards the course of action that has the best consequences. If more than one preference ay maganda maidudulot sa ibang tao, dapat mong piliin yung preference na pinaka may magandang madudulot sa iba. Pero paalala ni Singer, hindi applicable sa lahat ng decision making to. Hindi 24-7 dapat iniisip or kinakalculate yung magiging consequences ng decisions natin. Sa mga certain circumstances lang daw or depende sa sitwasyon. For example, you're part of a small community living in a forest. Then may nakita kang punong maraming fruits. If you're gonna think ethically, isipin mo syempre i-share sa mga kasama mo yung fruits kasi yun yung parang best decision. Pero, you have to weigh the consequences. Oo, makakain lahat, pero in the long run, baka umasa na lang yung iba na may mag-gather ng pagkain para sa kanila. At di na sila mag-gather at kukunti yung food supply nyo. Sabi nga ni Singer, na starting point ang utilitarianism ng universal ethics. Para sa kanya specifically yung preference utilitarianism daw yung ethical theory. Sa preference utilitarianism, sabi we should do what furthers the preferences of those affected. Nakasupport yung previous arguments niya dito. Sinasabi dito na an action is right kung nasatisfy niya somehow lahat ng preferences ng ibang tao compared sa ibang actions. Compared naman sa hedonistic utilitarianism na sinasabi na we should always do what will maximize pleasure or happiness and minimize pain or unhappiness. Para daw marating natin yung point na we're thinking ethically, preference utilitarianism is the key. At sabi nga ni Singer, we cannot refuse to take this step. Balikan natin yung scenario kanina, ikaw yung nakahanap ng fruit sa isang puno, pwedeng isipin mo na, ay ako naman nakahanap sa mga prutas na to. Ako naman nagsipaghanapin to. Kaya akin na to. Or pwede mo ring maisip na lahat naman ng tao sa community ay may equal right sa pinoprovide ng nature. So, obligation mo na i-share yung fruits equally. Parang black and white yung example ni Singer. Either you share it or you don't. Pero pwede namang mag-keep ka ng para sa sarili mo, pero may share ka pa din sa iba. Pero ang point dito para kay Singer ay alinmang decision piliin mo kung hindi mo naman ma-justify. Wala lang, gusto mo lang. Dito papasok yung preference utilitarianism, kung saan iwiwi mo yung preference mo kasama yung preferences ng iba. To reiterate, sabi nga ni Singer, if you're going to move beyond utilitarianism to go into universal ethics, in this case, it's going beyond preference utilitarianism, the utilitarian perspective Singer endorses. Dapat daw, unang-una, scrutinize natin yung notion na ang goal lang is to satisfy preferences. For hedonistic utilitarians, the fact daw na ready agad tayo let go yung preferences natin, once na malaman natin na hindi naman tayo sasaya kahit masatisfy yung mga yon, proves na all we really care about is happiness. At hindi yung satisfaction ng ating preferences. Sabi naman ng preference utilitarians, Etong mga preferences na to ng tao kasi ay based sa iniisip nilang mangyayari or mararamdaman nila pag nasatisfy yung kanilang preferences. For example, napakaraming tumataya sa loto. Siyempre, kahit gaano pakalit yung chance na manalo ng napakalaking pera, at least may chance. Better than nothing, ika nga. Pero, na-prove na ng researchers na yung mga taong nananalo sa loto, although initially sobrang saya nila, that euphoric feeling mabilis lang mawawala. At, they're not significantly happier than they were before. Pero sabi ni Singer, at least they got what they wanted, ba? Diba? Kaya, para sa preference utilitarians, dapat daw ang mga preferences lang na counted ay yung preferences natin pag tayo ay fully informed, kalmado, at clear ang pag-iisip. Para nga kay Singer, preference utilitarianism yung ethical theory na we should adopt. Dahil sa pagiging straightforward nito, 
Alam naman daw natin lahat kung ano yung preferences, yung needs, wants, and desires. Mas malinaw yung mga yon para sa atin compared sa pag-assess kung ano yung morally right or wrong na isang mahabang usapin pa. Pero in the end, ang preference utilitarianism para kay Singer ay hindi yung best na approach na dapat gamitin sa ethical issues, lalo sa usapin ng rights, justice, absolute moral rules, at iba pa. To summarize, for Singer, first, ethics is not concerned in particular about sexuality. Second, ethics is not impractical. Kasi sinasabi ng consequentialists, kabilang na si Singer, na they are concerned only with real-world effects. Third, ethics is not defined by religion. Hindi kailangang basihan ng religion sa ethical theories. Fourth, ethics is not relative. Kasi para sa kanya, yung mga moral opinions ng non-conformists sa isang society ay automatically mali kung ganun. And taliwas yun sa minimiting moral progress. At lastly, ethics is not subjective. Kasi kung ito daw ay subjective, ibig sabihin daw ba nito, di na pwedeng mag-disagree, di na pwedeng i-contradict. Para kay Singer, mahalaga na ang ethics ay based on reason at universal. We should go beyond ourselves, wherein there's no concept of I, at pantay ang pagtingin sa lahat ng tao at sa kanilang mga interes. Ayun lang, thank you sa pakikinig. Dito, nag-provide kami ng references at short videos. Nasa handout din to na baka makatulong sa inyo sa reading na to. Once again, thank you!